Well, welcome back, boys and girls. If you're joining us from the last video, um, where we left off, we're about to um, take the skid out from underneath the sled again. Um, I'll take it back. I want to get the rear end up in the air. Um, show you what it, all I did to have to get the old drive shaft out of there and how that all goes together. Um, and then we're going to have to start pressing the drivers off of the Renegade drive shaft and try and get them onto um, the Everest drive shaft. And hopefully that all works out the way that I want it to. Otherwise, we'll have to come up with some sort of a solution there. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing back over to the uh, handy dandy gambrel lift there and get the rear end up in the air, and we can get back underneath it and show you all what needs to be done yet and everything that we did thus far. So, like I said, I don't have the SC10 installed in here right now by any means. Um, the front arm is just bolted into the old uh, mount holes that the old skid was in. I just wanted to get uh, somewhat of an idea of what the stance was going to look like. Still quite a bit more work to be done before we're at that point. All right, let's take a look underneath this thing. All right, so I got pretty hung up getting the drive shaft out. This side came out of the chain case super easy, and then the other side was just way too, way too rusted. Um, so just ended up having to cut it, and then thankfully with the uh, Harbor Freight press, I was able to press the bearing out of the cup and save the cup. But um, you know, these sleds, a lot of the you know. Um, other models from the same year range like the Citation, the Blizzard, um, and even I think some of the Alans and Scandix, they all have uh, a lot of interchangeable parts, so eBay is kind of plentiful with anything that you might need. Um, but anyway, yeah, while we're under here, I need to figure out, um, or I, I'll show you what I need to figure out, I guess. I think we're going to be able to leave uh, the front mounting brackets where they're at, um, and then we'll just have to relocate uh, the rear ones back here. So the center to center distance on that skid, I believe I mentioned um, in the last video that I thought it was like 24 inches or something like that, or 20 some inches. Uh, that is in fact for a 121 inch skid, um, the 136. Uh, the center to center distance, at least from what I measured on the Renegade that it came out of, was exactly 30 inches. Um, so in that case, what we'll have to do is um, just measure from you know the mounting hole back to um, the mounting hole for the rear arm, uh, 30 inches. So obviously that's the center to center distance between arms. Um, and then that should set the preload correctly on the skid so we don't have any binding or anything like that once we get it installed. Um, so hopefully that works out. Um, I'm kind of planning on it. <laughs> as long as we keep everything pretty much similar to how it was um, coming out of the machine that the suspension came out of, it should operate um, you know, just fine, hopefully. Uh, the other thing we got to worry about is track clearance. Side to side in here, not going to be a problem. Like I said, uh, this tunnel is um, fit a 16 and a half inch wide track in it, so the 15 inch um, should be no problem. Um, the only issue we're going to have possibly is hitting the top of the tunnel and the belly pan up here um, with the track. But it's only an inch and a quarter paddle, so I don't think we're going to have a huge problem with it. Um, and the drivers. Um, that are going on the uh, drive shaft are going to be smaller than the original ones. So I'm um, kind of banking on that working out, but we'll see what happens. Um, so anyway, yeah, it was super easy to drop the uh, old suspension out. Um, you had your, you know, your upper idlers that went up in this hole, and then pretty much just pulled the, the bolts out of the front and rear arms, and she dropped right out. And a you know, um, little bit of spring tension there on the, the torsion springs that you got to watch out for so you don't, you know, snap a hand or something like that but other than that it kind of just drops right out and, and then you can roll it right out but um so i think what we're going to go do next is try and get the drivers pressed onto the drive shaft and see how well that's going to work um like i said i measured the uh 
thicknesses of the drive shaft and they're both inch and an eighth so I think it should work out. I should just be able to press the old ones off and the new ones on but I guess we'll find out. Alright, so we're going to take the drive shaft uh, that I just picked up off of eBay. Come on, man. Try and get the uh, old bearings pressed off of that. Because I was able to get a new set of bearings and seals. Um, and then once we get the bearings pressed off, we'll pull the snap rings, press the drivers off. And then kind of do the same thing uh, with the Renegade drive shaft to get those drivers pressed off and then try and get them pressed onto this axle. And uh, yeah, go from there. But again, the reason we got to use this axle is because, um, well, the gear, or I should say the splines uh, on the drive shaft are different than what they are on the newer model. Um, so if we didn't use this drive shaft, we'd have to swap the chain case over and the gearing and everything. And I'm trying to avoid doing that, so hopefully this works out and we won't have to do uh, any major swaps up in the belly pan slash engine area. So we got the drivers off of that drive shaft. I just got the two laid next to each other, just kind of checking them out here, trying to figure out which one is the better of the two. And you know, even though I cut 
this end off of the uh, original one that was in the sled, I think I'm going to try and use it. Um, the splines on this one are just immaculate compared to the one that I bought off eBay. Now that this one's not usable, um, but I'd probably have to throw it in the lathe and just kind of take a, a real small pass um, off the splines just because they've got indents and imperfections and uh, the end's kind of swollen. I'm not sure what happened to it. I mean, it didn't help that I dropped it off the press a couple times too, but um, not that we can't clean it up and save it and use it and have it as a spare, but um, I would really like to get this one welded up um, and then turn it down on the lathe just to see if I could do it. Um, bought that lathe last summer and really haven't used it for too much and um, I'd like to get get better at using it. So I think we're going to try that and see what happens. Um, Got to go ahead and get those drivers pressed off of that drive shaft now and um, yeah and then I guess we'll probably try and weld this one up. Um, it's Friday night right now. I'm probably going to save that for tomorrow morning. Um, might head in the house for the rest of the night, eat some dinner and hang out with the wife. And then probably come back out here early tomorrow morning. But uh, yeah, for tonight I think that's some halfway decent progress and we'll pick her up tomorrow. Well, good morning. Did not sleep well last night. It's too excited to get back out here and start working on this again. So uh, we'll see how many mistakes I can make today in my unrested state. But um, I think the first thing we're gonna try and do is get this old drive shaft welded up. Um, like I said, earlier I just think I want to try and use it because the splines um, on the chain case side are in such better shape than the one that I got off eBay um, so yeah I guess let's go toss that in the lathe um, see if we can get the ends squared up a little bit we'll just do a quick face cut on each side and then what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is um, just bore a hole I'm in the center of each piece and then I'll probably cut a smaller piece of stock to fit uh, in that hole the length that um, it needs to be to keep the length of this drive shaft uh, the same length as you know what it, what it, what it would have been stock, um, and then we'll weld that up. And if we have to, um, run a couple more passes down the lathe just to get um, just to get everything smoothed out. But I mean, we're really not going to be doing any welding near the bearing surface. So as long as we get everything lined up pretty well. Um, we shouldn't even really have to worry about the finish all that much, but we'll still try and dress it up a little bit. So I'll meet you over by the old South Bend and we'll see what we can do with that. Well, the lighting over here is not particularly great and we are um, sitting right below the furnace. So you probably got a little extra noise there. wobble there is to that. Doesn't look too bad. All right, so we got the drive shaft in the headstock there. Um, should be all set to go. Like I said, I'm just gonna run a quick uh, face cut there and try and smooth it off. And then I'm um, probably going to get a drill bit in the tailstock here and we'll just try and drill a small hole in the center of it. Um, and then like I said, we're gonna insert a uh, smaller piece of stock that'll keep both parts kind of lined up um, on center with each other as we weld them. So um, yeah, you'll kind of see how it works out as we get going on the process here. So we more or less have that cleaned up. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill um, drill a small hole in the center of it. I gotta quick figure out what size that's gonna be. I wanna say it's gonna be probably somewhere around 5 16 um, I think that's the size stock that I have. Um, so that's probably what we'll go ahead and use to keep everything centered. All right, I had a little bit of a change of heart there. I'm still gonna try and weld up that other drive shaft. I'm just 
I gotta take my time and make sure I'm gonna get, gonna get it straight and I just I gotta take some time and think about that so I think for right now we're just gonna try and clean this one up uh, I'm just gonna take a light light pass across the face of it there uh, clean up all the burrs that are on that end and then um, the bearing surface actually looks okay I might need to touch up the actual splines with a file um, and then we'll flip it around and kind of do the same thing on the other end. Just clean that one up a little bit from where I dropped it off the press and kind of put a ding in it the other day. So, um, yeah, hopefully this will work out. We'll see. Yeah, so that's got a pretty substantial wobble to it. Um, it's not like I can get it further in the headstock, so I might just have to take a pass here. And it should do what I want it to do, I think. Um, this isn't super precision. Like I said, I just got to get the burrs off the end of it there so it'll fit into, um, into, into the gear. I just put a live center in there to try and stabilize that a little bit. See if it'll take some of the wobble out. Hopefully it will. We'll see. Probably better than it was. Um, definitely looks a lot better than it was. I'm sure I'm gonna get ripped apart in the comments um, if anybody watches this that actually knows how to use a lathe the right way. But um, for my intents and purposes, this should work fine. Um, so I guess let's flip it around real quick, take care of the other side, and then we'll test fit it and see if it fits into the gear um, any better than it did last night.
right. Again, not perfect, but for what we're doing, good enough. Kind of sounds like the motor on the south bend is going to be up for replacement here soon. Sounded like it was getting kind of weak there towards the end. All right, so I just test fit the drive shaft gear um, on the eBay drive shaft, and it does fit on there uh, pretty well now. So I'm going to go ahead and get the measurements um, off of the spacing for the drivers here, and then we'll go ahead and press them off of uh, this shaft and try and get them pressed onto the eBay shaft. So outside to outside looks like about 13 and 9 sixteenths. About 3.32 inches um, from the outside to the inside. And then we'll check what we got on inside to inside. Inside to inside looks like about 4.2. 1.6 roughly, 4.165 maybe. Not that that needs to be that exact. I think the caliper is probably just the best measurement tool that I have. So I kind of want to transfer roughly um, where, I mean I just have these kind of, like I said, roughly lined up with each other. And I want to transfer uh, where the outside edge is on each, um, each end driver and try to transfer that over to um, the drive shaft that they're going on to, so I have somewhat of a uh, a marker there as you know to how far to go um, with spacing the drivers, I guess. All right, I think I have the measurements that I need. Uh, let's go ahead and get those pressed off. Well, voila, there. Once again, with the power of YouTube, what took me about two and a half hours <laughs> was only a couple seconds for you guys. Um, yeah, that uh, pretty dang time consuming uh, with just a manual shot press doing that. Um, just pressed off or press the drivers off of the Renegade drive shaft, and then like I said, the drive shafts happen to be um, the same diameter, so as long as I got the measurements right uh, that we took beforehand, I uh, just pressed them right back on into the respective positions. Um, looks good to me, I mean the measurements came out all right. Um, it's a little bit misleading once you get them off. The centers close up so fast that I kind of had to do a double take um, I thought that maybe the drive shafts were different diameters, but no, it's just um, that's how fast the centers close up on the drivers and um, you're just able to press them right back in uh, with just, I got that Harbor Freight shot press over there. Um, that's all I used to do that. Uh, worked out just fine, but like I said, a little bit time consuming. Uh, but that's done now. I did uh, check the fit underneath uh, the sled. It's going to be kind of sketchy getting it in there because if you remember uh, the original drive shaft just had two uh, two drivers on it and they were about you know roughly here and here now with the extra width of the additional drivers on this um, there's not enough room to slide it back and forth um, to get it positioned um, in the chain case and and the bearing retainer on the other side so what I'm gonna have to do is unbolt the chain case uh, <laughs> unbolt the chain case from the belly pan and have to you know slide it off to the side to get enough room uh, to get this up in there I'm kind of debating right now what I want to do as far as um, setting the bearings. I think I'm going to end up uh, just driving them into their, um, driving them into the houses uh, in the chain case and in the uh, bearing retainer on the opposite side and then fitting the drive shaft um, into the retainer and the chain case. I just think that's going to work out the best at the moment. Hopefully I'm not wrong about that. Um, but. You know, that's how these custom builds go. You kinda just gotta pick what makes sense, try it, and hopefully it works out. So um, I'm thinking that's gonna be the next step. Uh, I gotta get the oil seals positioned on the drive shaft, and then I guess we'll have to take a look at that chain case and see if we can get the bearing in it and get it uh, unbolted so we have enough room to get that in there. So that's where we're headed next. Just want to get the new uh, oil seals slid under the drive shaft so I don't end up forgetting about those.
obviously those are directional so make sure you get them on there the correct way and then these are the bearings that I got um, yeah what is what are they the 6205 RS or 2 RS um, the 2 RS is just you know rubber seal on both sides as opposed to, to just one side and for whatever reason you know these are the the 2 RS seem to be more prevalent online than just the RS so I just went ahead and got the 2 RS um, don't know why it would really make much of a difference in this application whether you had one seal or two um, I would think you know I guess if you had since both sides are sealed you probably don't need the extra oil seals on the drive shaft but um, who knows So that seems like it should be a good fit. Like I said, I'll probably have to... Um, I don't know, I really got to think about how I'm going to... How I'm going to install this. It's a little bit different. That should work out well. Uh, like I said, I think I'm going to pound this into the chain case and then I will have to um, kind of just, once I get the opposite side into the bearing retainer and then have this, you know, into the, the chain case side of the belly pan, I'll have to just draw um, the chain case in slowly. And God, that's going to kind of suck because that's, um, you know, it's not steel, it's that whatever magnesium alloy or aluminum, whatever it is. Um, so that's a little bit softer. So that might be kind of a pain in the butt Hopefully this draws on here smooth. And again, the reason that I can't just pound this onto the shaft and then fit it up into the chain case like I would like to, well, <laughs> sorry for my indecision here. I think maybe, maybe I'll be able to do that. I think I might be able to do that. I'm gonna check over a couple more things here and then I'll get back with you guys and, and let you know how it goes. So before I go putting the drive shaft and the track back in there, um, I need to get my holes drilled and the mounting plates moved and everything on the tunnel to get the skid mounted properly. Um, so what we're going to do is leave the front arm plates where they're at and use those existing holes. Um, these rear arm plates are going to have to get moved back to about this bump out um, in the tunnel. So I got to drill those rivets out real quick on both sides and drop those plates and then get the measuring tape out again. Um, mark some holes, drill the holes, and then re-rivet uh, those plates in place. Um, should be pretty quick overall, but you know, famous last words. We'll see how it goes. So with those brackets drilled out now, we can get up underneath there and make our measurements back from um, the front mounting hole, um, about 30 inches back, that's gonna be our center to center distance. Um, and then we'll have to drill that new, actually I think what we're gonna do is just mark the location of the hole um, and then we'll get the bracket um, back up, kinda up in there where it needs to be and then you know drill all the respective holes and get that riveted back in place but um, I'll bring you guys down underneath there so you can watch and see what we're doing and how we're doing it. Okay so like I said um, our center to center distance is going to be from the front arm mounting hole to the rear arm mounting hole um, that's going to be 30 inches which is about an inch less than the um, uh, I guess the uncompressed distance between those holes. Um, as the skid sits on the floor that's what it is between uh, the two mounting arms is 31 inches um, so shortening that distance by one inch is going to give the suspension uh, the proper preload that it needs um, to work properly, I guess. And that should um, prevent any binding from occurring 
you know, as the sus suspension articulates and does what it needs to do uh, going over bumps and whatnot. So, um, like I said, this front mounting plate we're leaving in place, um, so we just need to relocate the rear one um, and try and measure that out, figure out where it's going to go, and then try and duplicate that on both sides with some relative degree of accuracy. Okay, so there's our 30 inches. I actually measured from the bottom set of holes um, just to kind of keep uh, the measurement on the same plane. If I would have measured off the top, the measurement could have gotten a little bit goofy, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna go grab a square and we'll transfer that line all the way up the inside of the tunnel. Um, so we've got a good solid mark to work off of in positioning uh, that bracket. Alright, so I've got my 30 inch line there, and I want to center that line in the middle of um, the rear hole right here, because I measured off uh, the rear hole on the front there. Alright, that should give me enough to go off of there. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'll just drill out uh, the rivet holes rivet it in place and then once it's kind of secure then I'll go ahead and uh, drill out the mounting holes um, on the bottom. I think it'll just kind of work a little bit better that way to have everything kind of um, held in place before I go nuts drilling holes. Alright so I got eighth inch rivets going in here. Same thing that came out of there. That should hold that in there well enough for now, um, just to get the rest of the holes drilled and everything. And I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the other side real quick and get that one um, mocked up, measured out, and mounted. And then I'll finish out uh, drilling the rest of the holes and tossing rivets in there. Um, I don't think I have quite enough rivets here um, to, to finish filling all the holes, but um, I'll at least have enough to get each plate mounted and then I'll have to stop at the store tomorrow, pick up a couple more and get it done. Well I pulled the chain case and kind of cleaned out down there, cleaned off the back side of it and everything, kind of figured it would be a good time to do that. Um, so now I guess now that I have uh, those mounting brackets and the, the tunnel kind of drilled and uh, riveted where they need to be, um, I'm going to try and throw the drive shaft in with the track and just kind of get a rough idea of how it's going to fit in there and I guess we'll go from there and see what happens. Um, Maybe we'll try and throw the bolts um, into the skid and actually mount it, see how it's going to sit. Um, I have a feeling that getting this drive shaft in here is going to be kind of a challenge, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Well, oh, just trying to make sure that I'm going to get the track uh, under here facing the correct direction. Um, <laughs> arrows on it are pointing forward, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's going to be going in the right direction, so I guess we'll just have to see what happens here. Okay, so the drive shaft is um, at least in its holes. Uh, it looks like there's going to be plenty of clearance between the belly pan and the track, so we should be good there. Um, I guess I'm going to try and throw the chain case back in, get that bearing set on the chain case side, and then get the bearing retainer on on the other side, and just kind of see how everything fits in there and make sure it's going to work out all right.
I left the lock ring or the retaining ring out for the bearing cup on the opposite side of the machine. And I've got the drive shaft and the track in there. So that sucks, but <laughs> um, I think what I'm going to do, I don't know, maybe I'll take it back apart and put that in there, but I might just cut a slit in there, bend it, fit it around the, uh, around the drive shaft and then just bolt it in. I really don't think that would cause any harm, honestly. Nothing wrong with doing it that way as far as I can see, but I think it's time we throw the skid in there and mount it up and see exactly just how it's going to look. not 100% sure where I went wrong. Um, I think I just need drop brackets for the rear arm of the skid. Um, as you can see right now it's sitting level with the skis up on uh, the dollies but if I set the uh, skis flat down on the concrete I'll show you here. Uh, the back end of the skid comes up off the ground like that. I'll zoom in on it here so you can see. Um, see there's quite a gap there between the ground um, and the rear of the skid. So I think the way we're going to solve that is with drop brackets. Uh, there's a little bit more work to be done here yet but I think this is a good start. Um, I'm just going to have to go in the house, do some research, like I said, figure out where I went wrong. But all in all I think it's looking pretty good so far. I'm probably going to end this video here. I think it's a good place to stop. Um, and I will pick back up with you guys once I figure out uh, what I have to do to correct that weird angular problem we got going on back there. But that's why we do this, right? We're uh, having fun trying to think things through before we do them so we don't have to make too many mistakes and, and redo things. But sometimes it happens. So hopefully uh, if anyone's watching this because they're thinking about doing it themselves, you guys can benefit from my mistakes. And until the next one, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon.